Welcome back to Hasbro's Hide. Unfortunately, it's been a while since I've been able to make videos. I've been taking care of some elderly parents and moving and things like that. So sorry I haven't been on for the last few weeks, but now we want to catch up just a little bit. I thought we'd start with a brief review of three different budget, quote unquote, uh, red dots. And these uh, two of these I own and one is lent to the channel to review here a little bit. But uh, there's times where an inexpensive red dot, as long as it's reliable, is a great option, right? You don't always have to go out and drop, you know, three, four, five, six hundred dollars on a red dot because everybody wants to be an operator. You know, sometimes you get caught in that crowd and they, they do some extreme testing and say, hey, that's got to make it good. Not necessarily. To me, at least in my shooting, as long as it's reasonably rugged, reliable, and tracks and holds its zero well, that's fine. Red dots are not long range, high precision. You can use them for some of that, but it's not like when you're shooting with scopes or precision type rifles. Uh, but still you want the best value and the best performance you can get. All of these three we'll talk about here, by the way, are two MOA dots. Now those are pretty much gonna be on rifles. I have one pistol I have a two MOA dot on and it's probably too fine. Pistols, at least in my opinion, will start somewhere at the three MOA dot size. But that's a personal preference, and you may be different in that in your eyes better than my older eyes. Um, so we're going to start here looking at three different ranges of prices. Okay, uh, On the lower end, and probably the highest value, we'll talk about that in a minute, is the Monster Vader. Monstrum is known for making very good and very uh, quality products, but at a much more affordable price. Now they'll list this as designed in California, right? If you can see that there or not, so I get the camera to focus, and made in China. So that's just to let you know, that's where that's coming from. I think all these in the end are made in China. Um, the second one would be the next step up, and that's a Sig Romeo. Now, this is a good value, again, for the money. Um, is it the best value? I don't know. We'll talk about that as we go along. And on the higher end, but certainly not high end when, you know, compared to Trijicon and the rest of the gang like that, is primary arms, and this is the um, SLX MD25. Now, this is a very nice dot. It's got some advantages, it's got some disadvantages, but it's very nice. But it's also uh, three times what the Monstrum costs. Okay, so that kind of gives you an idea of the scale we'll talk about. And also, we'll talk about uh, rough pricing here. We can't give exact pricing or YouTube gets upset. So, anyway. Um, these are the three I thought we'd start talking about. Now, again, I said all are two MOA and all are red dots. So that's basically it. Now you have different objective sizes here. Okay, so this is a 20 millimeter. This is supposed to be 20 millimeter. It looks very small. And this is 30. So field of view is one of the things you pay for when you get to the more expensive ones. You can pick it up faster if you have a wider field of view. But is that worth the money to you. You'll have to make that call. We'll, we'll compare them side by side here in a minute. But for basics on specs and things, looking at that, again, these two are 20 millimeter. They're all 1x power, so there's no magnification involved in them. Uh, these two come with absolute co-witness mounts, and they're both this 1.41 inch height, which is supposed to be really ideal for ARs. Um, so what that means, absolute co-witness, is you can see through and see your sights. I don't know if you can see that better, get it in front. You can look through and still see your sights. And so that's nice. The more expensive primary arms does not do that on this side. Now you can see either side of it, but you would have to get a different mount to uh, co-witness your sights. So it depends on your application and what you want. The Monstrum on the lower end. Now I can't tell you exactly how much this costs, but I can tell you it was less than $60 shipped to my door. Okay, so that's... That is still, in fact, there are some deals even better on their site if you want one that's blemished or an open box kind of thing. So you can check them out if you want to. Now, the SIG, I can tell you, was a little less than, you know, we'll say in, on average with shipping probably in tax to your place, a little less than $110. Okay. Now, the primary arms is about, uh, well, just maybe add or just a little bit less. It depends, again, where you're going to live and what taxes you'll pay, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it is um, less than $210, something in that range. So again, that's just rough pricing. You're gonna have to check the retail values and what you end up paying when you 
pay tax and shipping. Now, um, as I mentioned, these two come with the mounts. Um, the primary arms actually comes with more mounts. It gives you several different height adjustments here. Now, while it's not co-witnessed underneath, uh, it gives you several different ones. It comes with a 0.96. Now, that's the height here, the height here, right? For, from the top of the rail to the center of your objective. A 0.96, a 1.41, which is, again, the equivalent of this one here that you see on this 300 blackout, by the way. Completely unloaded, nothing chambered and open. Uh, then they come up, they also have two more. They have a 1.54, so coming up even higher, and a 1.64. Those all come with this. And, of course, you pay more, you get more, right, typically. At least you hope you do. Um, all of them have coated lens optics. Now, you can argue, is one coating better than another? I can't tell you that. Don't know. That is just something they, they sell, and they, it has a feature that they have in there. Let me get this right. The Monstrum has 10 levels of LED brightness adjustment. Now, I kind of like the buttons on here. They're sealed, kind of waterproof. Windage and elevation are more shielded than are the, like the SIG, which is more wide open. You see the adjustment here and the adjustments here for brightness. I don't know that these SIGs are going to leak anymore. They probably don't because all of these meet this IPX7 rating. Now, what IPX7 means, if you see that advertised, it's really a test. It goes to three meters or a little over three feet for 30 minutes, okay, and it can't leak or fog. And so all of these claim that they meet that spec. Um, battery life might be the next thing uh, you think about. This one has a 2032 battery. You can see by the size here on the, on the side of this, um, this, uh, this, uh, ob this <laughs> object. How about this optic? Um, this one has a 1632. The SIG has a smaller battery. So while this one, they'll say, goes up to 50,000 or more hours, that depends on the illumination level you run, but on a medium set setting, you'll get roughly 50,000. This is only 20. Now, 20,000 hours. Does it matter? It's more on how disciplined you're going to be to switch the batteries up, right? 20,000 20, hours is quite a bit, but there would be points where you're going to run that down. And if you put it in a schedule to rotate the battery up, it really doesn't matter. Uh, same thing here. This is a 2032 battery and about 50,000 hour life. Uh, one thing I didn't mention on the mounts is um, this is the absolute co-witness uh, coming through on the Monstrum, but they do give you a low profile mount too, which is nice. So you can, depending what you're mounting on, you know, if you want to put this on an AR, well, that's probably the one you want. Put this on uh, a lower profile rifle or even a pistol, perhaps, well, then you can use this one. So that comes with a monster, even at its budget price. Um, weight. Well, they all, of course, different weights. Now, this is uh, supposedly five ounces. I'm pretty much pretty sure SIG tells you without the battery. I imagine this weight is without the battery, too. Five ounces for the Monstrum. It's 5.5 ounces for the SIG, so slightly heavier, but half an ounce is probably more noise than anything else. But this is six and a half ounces, the primary arms. And so um, that may be something you want to be aware of. Not a big deal because it's, you know, you're going to trade off a little bit of weight for the larger objective size, and that is probably worth every bit of it. But that is up to you to judge. What else can we know about this thing? Amount of elevation, uh, windage, and up and down. Um, the Monster, I believe, is plus or minus 40 MOA, and that's windage and elevation. The SIG is going to be uh, plus or minus, let's see, 40 as well. The primary arms, plus or minus 50 MOA. And so that gives you quite a bit of adjustment. Nope, I'm sorry. Let me back that up. I don't want to mislead anybody. The Ro SIG Romeo is plus or minus 50 uh, also here on MOA. And so that's on windage and elevation. So plenty of adjustment for most typical red dot shooting. Um, you're going to shoot really, really long range on red dots. Uh, you're probably not going to be <laughs> particularly accurate. It depends how far you want to go. It's certainly good to 200 yards um, with the right system. And then, of course, you can have an additional rail on there to raise it as you need to. Covers. Well, the, the Monstrum comes with this little um, bikini-type mount here. It's just stretchable rubber, and, and it does fine. I actually kind of like these uh, because you just pull them off and they're out of your way. But some people like these flip-up covers that the SIG uh, Romeo comes with. And these are uh, <laughs> really hard to get off. Um, but, uh, you know, I shouldn't say too much, but 
you can get them open, but they're really difficult. You know, as you use them over a lifetime, they'll probably wear a little bit. But they are see-through, so you don't even have to flip them up, right? You can just leave them on there, or you don't even have to put them on because they come off um, quite uh, easily there. You can just take them right off and do what you, do what you want. Not with hard to close. But like I said, they're tight and they're new, um, and I got them on there. But you can see that may, may or may not be for you. Um, the primary arms, I don't know if it comes with a mount or not, because again, this is borrowed and, and given to the channel to review. But um, I'm sure they probably come with something like that. Warranties. Warranties. Let's talk warranty. Five-year warranty on the Monstrum. I think that's pretty amazing. Red dots tend to can see a lot of abuse, depending on how you use them. And so five years on a budget price optic, is, I think, is, is perfectly good. SIG says limited warranty. See the website. Well, I didn't take time to see the website because that annoys me. They should state their warranty policy, and they don't on this one. So uh, they say limited warranty. Uh, so chances are it'll be a couple years, and you know, then you're going to be out. But, it's, you know, again, it's not that expensive, but it is more than the Monstrum. Not quite twice. Actually, pretty close to twice what the Monstrum is. Now, the primary arms, what do you get when you pay, you know, over $200 for it? You get lifetime warranty. Okay. And that may be useful to come in. Again, I didn't uh, buy this optic. I have borrowed this optic. But when I took it out and looked at it, I don't know if you can see right here, maybe you can see in the camera or not, but this lens, this last lens is uh, at an angle. It looks to me like it's knocked loose. So when I give this back to the friend of the channel that loaned it to me, I have to show him that, and this may be going back for some warranty work because that lens appears to be popped out. Um, from recoil, I don't know. I haven't mounted it and shot it yet. I've just looked through it. So um, one thing to note there, and again, this is also made in China. You know, that's common amongst these red dots. So I really don't hold that against any company in doing that because otherwise they're not going to be producing them at a reasonable cost um, for us. So sort of an introduction to these things. Um, they, they all have different levels of illumination. Maybe I can show you a few of those. Let me put the Monstrum on. Now the Monstrum is an interesting dot by itself. You think like most of them you pick it up, you're going to have the battery to the left and the, um, I got a fingerprint on this one, sorry about that, uh, battery to the left, and you think it's out of mount, but that, in fact, that's wrong. The battery goes to the right on this. So most scopes, right, I'm used to scopes, the battery's over here when they're on them or on top, but this one, in fact, is to the right. So your elevation and your windage adjustments are back closer to you, which is kind of nice. You don't have to reach around to find them. They're right here. So that is actually a nice thing. And then your... Um, brightness adjustments are there. So let's look through here and see if we can see this together. I'll turn this dot up and we'll keep turning it up till we see it, but right there. And it's not very far. In fact, it's really, really bright. They call this a laser, uh, di a laser sight instead of a LED. So a laser diode instead of a traditional LED optical system. And they claim it's 300% brighter and it makes your battery last longer. I don't have any measurement of that, but I can tell you it's a very, very bright dot. And I've had this out in the sunlight, too. And there you can turn it down. You can see it there just as fine as well. So at this very brightness, very highest brightness setting, I get a little bit of a halo to it. Um, but that's probably my eyes. I have an astigmatism, so that's common in that. But maybe it's that way in the lens. I don't know. I'll have someone else look at it. We'll get that. But certainly nice and bright and clear especially at these lower settings, which are perfectly good in daylight as well. So that's the, um, that, that's the monster. I can't show you the Sig Romeo easily because of the rifle and its positioning, but it is similar, but it is not as bright, I can tell you, as the Vader. It's good, but not quite as bright. Now, one thing I don't know if you can tell here, if you look inside of here, it looks like, I'll put these maybe this way, that the Vader objective is bigger. But it's just the way it's, it's black banded, or you see this black eye cup around it here. The actual diameter of the objective is the same as the SIG, and they both claim to be 20 millimeters. But the SIG brightness is certainly good enough. Uh, I've shot this already. This is 300 blackout and on the channel. In daylight, no issue. So nothing against the SIG's brightness. Slightly less bright than the Vader, but not enough to matter. Now, the primary arms, I think, is really, really cool. So you take a look at it. It's got a bunch of half notches in between there. 
Let me see if I can reach around here and we'll see if we can see this together and get it turned up. There you go. You can see it already. That's at its brightest setting. That's really, really bright. And then we can keep turning it down, keep turning it down. And like I say, there's 12 levels on this one as well. But what this does have is the, and I don't know if you can see that well in the camera. Let's we'll see if I can get it one more time there. It's a circle in the dot. Now, for target shooting, I really like that. For rapid fire acquisition, yeah, it's good, but I don't know if that's as good um, to me anyway. Now, here are the, you probably can't even see these because I can't hardly really see them. This is the night vision setting. So they have a, two really low settings for night, and then they have the daytime settings, which are 12 different settings ending as bright as that right there. Okay, so it gives you a few other options that you don't get with a cheaper scope. I do like the reticle pattern in it overall. And so that's, that's one thing you pay for is you don't get just a dot. You get the circle and a dot, which helps, uh, helps acquisition on like targets. Maybe, maybe, maybe not so good for other things. We'll be shooting these two again on the range. Probably put this one, the, uh, the front of the channel will have this on another rifle. So maybe we'll borrow that rifle and shoot this as well and get a better view for how it does. We'll do some rapid transition shooting and things like that and see how well we pick up the targets with these um, different dots. I think primarily we're going to see it's the objective size, right? That you'll be able to see things faster, but it is quite a bit larger too, as you can see here, and a little bit heavier, about an ounce and a half heavier, but that's probably not a big deal. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. This is a good chance to look at three different budget optics without going all the way up to the real high dollar guys. Uh, and um, I'm really impressed so far with the Monstrum actually overall. The SIG is decent again, but the Monstrum for the money uh, seems to be really good. Now, I don't have a lot of rounds through the Monstrum yet, so we'll have to see, right? And we'll be shooting these over the next year and report back on durability as we do as we go along. Anyway, I, I hope you enjoyed this. They're good values, I think, in all these cases, different features and different um, things you may or may not like about each one. But we'll check them out over time. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you do, please like and subscribe.